let this mind be in you, and it's being described to us by this thought of Jesus emptying himself. And um, um, this, the verb here means to literally pour out everything until it's all gone. It, uh, he poured himself out. He emptied himself. As Jim said, he divested himself. Um, and, you know, I have to say, because sometimes we're brought to emptiness, we're brought to limita limitations, um, that the emptying that Jesus went through was not the result of circumstances emptying him or the result of people doing things to him. Uh, it is self-emptying. Uh, the other is humbling. When God humbles you, or you go through circumstances that humble you, uh, you won't be humble long if, if the circumstances go away. You'll go back to what you were before. But, but we feel, you know, I mean, in a way I can feel, well, I've been emptied of so much um, through circumstances and whatever. But the reality is that Christ didn't just go through hard things that brought about an emptying. He emptied himself. He, met, you know, the way it says, he made himself of no reputation. <clears throat> and um, I think those are important points. Um, <clears throat> and then we saw in verse uh, 6 there, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, thought it not a thing to be held on to or grasped after to be equal with God. Um, <clears throat> And the verb in that scripture is saying that uh, it's used to say there, that there's nothing to clutch or to snatch or to grasp tightly to, uh, that it is nothing to grasp onto or he will not do that. Um, or you could say he thought it not something to cling to. Or you could say it says he thought it not robbery. He thought that he wasn't being robbed in giving it up. Okay? He thought it not, that this isn't, you know, that he's being robbed of something by giving this up. <clears throat> now, that's interesting because uh, keep your place here in Philippians, but look over in Isaiah 14. I haven't really taking the time to look at this scripture, so I hope that's the one that, it, that I'm thinking about. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, and what it's saying is he thought it not that he was being robbed to be equal, that he's not being able to be equal with God. Okay, everybody get that because it's huge. He didn't think he was being robbed in the fact that he was made a man and was no longer able to be equal with God in appearance, in glory, in understand. Does everybody understand that? Okay, let me say it again. <laughs> Jesus emptied himself by not feeling like it was robbery that God the Father was still God, God the Holy Spirit was still God, but he was made like a man, and not just a man, but a lowly man, all the way down, a, a man, a servant, remember how it words that there in Philippians 2? A criminal who died on the cross. A man, a servant, a criminal who died on the cross. And in all of that, he didn't think it, a thing to be grasped after or that he was having to hold on to it, that he was being robbed of his glory and everything by going this route. Now that's just huge because what I'm going to read here in uh, Isaiah 14 is another person and starting in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground who didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will, also, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high God. All right. 
So there you're hearing Lucifer. There you're hearing, most people say Lucifer was uh, Satan before the fall and that these things is what made him the devil. Somebody says, how did he become a devil? Right here. This is how. By becoming so focused. I mean, there are five I wills here. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. And basically, Jesus didn't think that robbery or a thing to be grasped after to be equal with God, but apparently Satan did. So what we're addressing here, and I, I wrote it down just before class here. <clears throat> if you have a problem with these certain areas I'm fixing to read, then this whole kenosis thing is going to bug you. Um, if you are seeking equality with those who are on the highest level, if there is a desire to be something, to be someone, or if there is a resistance against being looked down upon or being thought small or looked upon as less, if you have trouble in those areas, I suggest you don't come back from after this class anymore. Or I suggest you do because you're having problems problems in these areas <laughs> you know what I mean and that this would actually be good for you but these are the things that Paul is dealing with in the church so we uh, if nothing else we have the assurance that other people have the same problems we have is that good news that we're not the only ones with these kind of problems and, and things <clears throat> but we have to make the leap the way I hope that the Philippians made the leap and uh Let's face it, on the one hand you have Jesus, the other hand you have Lucifer. On the hand that is Jesus, you have one who doesn't think it, you know, uh, something that's, that he's being robbed by taking away his visible glory. The other one, he is, uh, if you read in Ezekiel 28, he is the anointed cherub. He is... You know, it describes all of the, the, the beauty and the, the blessedness of who he was before he became Lucifer. But, I mean, before he became Satan. But the thing that made the difference was, I'm high. I may be higher than all the other angels, but I'm not high enough. I can't stand to live lower or be thought less. Now... God created angels. That makes you less right there. God's eternal. Without beginning and without end, angels had a beginning. I mean, I'll assume they will be without end, but so will you. Somebody said to me once, well, you know, the blessing is we get everlasting life. You know, I said everybody's got everlasting life. Everybody's going to live forever. It just depends on where you go. <laughs> you know, I mean... You know, you didn't gain length. You had length. It was going to go on forever. It just depends on where. Just for the camera's sake, that drink was healthy. <clears throat> um, and he said, I will be like whom? Who does he say I'm going to be like? I will be like God, the most high God. Um, <clears throat> so he thought it um, something to grasp at. He, he thought, now, I, I say that because I'm going to use a recent example. Recently I met with somebody, in fact, it was only a week or so ago, who left this place not that long ago and, was, and told me I had a real problem problem with other people being over me or being higher than me. This was a guy that was telling me this. I just couldn't stand it that so-and-so was, you know, that I never could seem to get to their position or I never could, you know. And it was just practical stuff. It wasn't like spiritual or whatever. It's just, you know, that they were the boss of the whatever, you know. <clears throat> and um, and they said, you know, some people have a poor self-image and they handle it different ways. And he said, the way I handle it is that it drove me crazy to be less than anybody else. Well, now I'm going to be honest with you. I, 
I don't have that problem. I got my own problems, okay? I got a whole different set, okay? They're not better or worse. They're just different. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't have that problem, okay? I don't, you know. If somebody, you know, came in to, in fact, I was talking with Mallory's dad recently. We went, a couple of days ago, we went out to lunch, and we were just sitting there eating and talking and stuff, and, <clears throat> and he said something about, you know, when they move down here that they want to make this as their home church and stuff like that. And I said, man, praise God. We've been looking for somebody to come in and be the new pastor. <laughs> and he went, no. And he was like, you got to be kidding me. <clears throat> um, you know, I'm not grasping after position. It would be easier without it. Way easier. So much easier. I mean, it would be so easy to just like get a job and just work and then go home and then go attend somewhere. I could just, mwah. but I can't do that. I, I can't, I can't. It's not because I, it's because of the, what God has done in me and I must, no it is, I must be about my father's business. I have to, I will, I will, I'll die doing it. I know I'll die doing it. <laughs> but. These, these things, these, these things that rise within us that say, you know, are, and what are those things? They are pride. They are jealousy. Well, you know, they, you know, somebody gets jealous because somebody knows more than you in the Lord. I mean, I, this thought comes to my mind. Well, get in the word and know more than them. Wow. What a kind, oh, no, no. You know, I want it to come easy to me. I know they've worked for years and spent time in the Word and sought the Lord with all their heart and done without to get to that place. But I'm jealous of them because I wish God would just drop that on me. And many times we think God just drops that on different people, and He doesn't just drop it on you. He doesn't. There are, you know, uh, I go through Bibles and computers like crazy. I mean, I, you know, this Bible right here, if I opened it, well, I can show you a little bit. It's falling apart. Two years ago, I took one just like this to, to Holland and asked them, because they do book binding there, if they would do it. And they fixed that one, and this one was the one I was using while that one was in repair, and now it's down. I go through Bibles and computers. My computer today, or yesterday, and it's like, I'm... I, I just ride them like a horse and I put them up wet, you know. I mean, I just, because I'm, I'm going after the Lord and all, I mean, even this, I haven't even had this computer that long from the other one that broke down. But if you look at the keys and everything, they're just worn, the letters are worn off and stuff like that. It's like, this hadn't been just sitting around gathering dust, you know. <clears throat> well, you're not, you know, Oh, Jesus, hit me with the anointing. That's the way it's preached nowadays. Just hit me with the anointing. And so we go to church service after service and revival after a revival, and we go down to the altar every time to get something. The altar to get. The altar to get. You go to the altar to give, to lose. But we go to the altar to get, and I want the anointing so that I've got all of this stuff without any effort or without any heart that has gone through much loss, you know? You know? I mean, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna go off on some personal stuff here, but you, I mean, I consider Jim and Carolyn, and they live in a little bitty house with very little, and, and you can't, if you had the ability to possess a lot of stuff, you couldn't have it because there's only so much room. And they have lived in that for a long time, and they've lived uh, contentedly to the Lord much of that. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, maybe all of it, but I'm just saying, I'm leaving room because none of us are totally 100% perfect. Um, you know, I was, I was looking at Kelly sitting there holding uh, Ben's baby and thinking, you know, I mean, she's, she's, she goes 90 to nothing for God. And she probably thought, you know, this baby's so cute. And I'm sure it, it hits you. You know, I'd like to have a baby or something like that, you know. If 
if I had one, I'd give it to you. you know? <laughs> I'm kidding. <clears throat> but, you know, there are losses that people have gone through, you know. I think of Mallory and all that, you know, I mean, she lived up in that apartment for years and years and years and years, and then God blessed her now with a, a new situation. And last time she and I really sat down and talked, she said, you know, if the Lord wanted me back there, I would leave this situation, and I would move into the apartment again if that's the, the mind of the Lord. And she meant it with all of her heart. And I know it was hard there and that it's God's really just blessed abundantly where she's at now. Why, why would you empty yourself? Anybody getting where I'm going? Why would you empty yourself? Well, I'll tell, tell you exactly why. The only reason why any self-centered, selfish human being would do it is because Christ is being formed in them. That's it. You know, that's it. It actually is Jesus being formed in his body. And to this, I say glory to God. I say glory to God. And I, you know, I could call all of you out and, you know, I could honestly, I mean, honestly, I could call all of you out and just go on and on about each of you and, and how you've done that to the Lord. Uh, the fact that you want me to call your name says you've got a way to go yet. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's how you play that turn. But that's, it's just a fact, you know, I, it hit me the other day. Oh, no. Um, Kim was saying something tonight when we were having dinner over Cassie's, and she said something about, uh, I, I don't remember the specifics, but she said something about, I was preaching in the conference, or, or I, in my newsletter right after the conference, I was hitting people over some issue about Thanksgiving or whatever, and, uh, and I, I've thought in my mind over the years, why do people get so upset with me? And for the first time, it actually hit me. No wonder I tell them the truth. And people get upset when you tell them the truth. I don't, I, I don't want to hear the truth. Make me feel better, you know. And I don't tell the truth in a mean way, even. <laughs> you know, I just put it out there. I, th I, I assume we all want the truth, you know. And I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm really not. It doesn't even come to my mind that, you know, this, this you, you wounded my pride. I mean, I'm not thinking... I, I'm not even thinking I don't want to wound your pride. I'm not thinking I want to wound it. I'm just thinking, look, this is, this is the way it is. So anyway, that hit, that hit me when you were talking. <clears throat> All right, so let's get back. Um, we really only have a short time here. Um, so let's see, maybe I, before I get to this other part, I should uh, finish this off here. <clears throat> That scripture says he thought it not something to be cling after, to be clinging after, to be cleaving after. Um, the devil did to be equal with God. It just makes me want to just read some of this now. Jesus is God. Do you understand that? He is God. He's one with God. He is God. But he didn't think it was a thing to be grasping after, to be equal in outward show and glory and honor, to be equal with God. Now, if you really grasp that concept, you would say something like, what a God is he? Do you know what I'm saying? You would just think, my God, what a God. Because, but then again, we still can't comprehend the depth of what Jesus went through. And so, let me just read a few things to you here. He who made the sun became man and walked the dusty roads in Israel and was smitten by that same sun. <laughs> well, you never made a sun, so you don't know what it's like to be burnt by something that you made. <clears throat> Maybe some of your parents do. <laughs> uh, 
the maker of man became man and was crucified by his own created beings. The one who made, and I, in my Jesus freak days, I remember picturing Jesus on the cross and they're nailing him and the guy's on this sort of ladder up there driving a stake and, and it's like I could see through Jesus' eyes and he's driving this, this spike through his hands and Jesus isn't looking at his hand or the spike, he's looking into this guy's face and he's thinking, I made you. I made the tree that, that you made this cross from. You know, I created all of that. And yet, it's turned back in on me. <clears throat> he who was the bread of life put himself in a position to be made hungry just so he could reach us. The fountain of living waters made himself subject to thirst. He was the truth but he was accused as a false witness. Now, I mean, I'm trying to show you how you're going to get that, but I mean, at least try to consider this one who is and was and ever will be the truth being accused of, of being a false witness. You know, we get our feelings hurt. I get my feelings hurt when that happens, but that's nothing compared to, and yet, the Lord, and yet Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ, and this is the way he is. See? And the only reason why I'm going at it from this angle is to show you the depth of what, you know, because we can romanticize or do whatever or, or limit the reality of what it means to let this mind be in us, but what it means is to limit yourself down, 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 down until the very sun you created is smiting you, until the, the very trees that you created are being cut up for a, a cross upon which you will be crucified, upon which you have lived all your life as the fountain of living waters, and now you say, I thirst, you know, for us to reach us. The great judge of the living and the dead was brought to trial and found guilty by mortal men. The judge of the whole universe. He who was just became condemned by the unjust. Him who created all strength, but yet is more powerful than all strength that he created, became weak. <laughs> I mean, it just blows your mind. He created all strength that exists, and yet the strength it took to create that is way far beyond all strength, and yet he became weaker. He put himself in a, an incredible position of weakness to be accused, to be crucified, to be put to death. You know, we, we get upset if somebody doesn't pat us on the back or acknowledge us. <laughs> and God, who always existed and is life itself, died. Philippians 2 is God giving himself away, and yet, and yet, remaining God because and that's where you get into what did he empty himself of okay he divested himself of his divine power he in other words I mean we see that we see we see him feed 5,000 we see him heal somebody and we think wow that's powerful that ain't nothing that's no hard that is a, a pittance of a demonstration of the power of God you know, he could sneeze and the whole world be healed. I mean, you know, come on. You know, just blink, you know, okay. I'll take one eyelash and, you know, the whole world is set right again, glorious and beautiful and, you know, no pollution and no problems and the creation is, you know. No, no we don't understand 
the magnitude because we don't understand. We say, well, a king stepped down, but he wasn't just a king. He was God of all things, creator of it. <clears throat> so he, it is God giving himself away, and yet he's still God. He is not a defenseless man. He is not robbed of his power. He is not put into an awkward situation over which he has to say over which he has no say or no influence, he emptied himself. Can I get an amen on that? It, this is, you know, you know, it talks about it in the book of Acts. By the determinant counsel of God, he was crucified. You with wicked hands have taken and crucified him. <clears throat> it almost sounds that before the foundation of the world the Godhead got together, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and said this will be the plan, and Jesus said I'll die for it. I'll give myself totally for it. Now you do understand, Jesus, that this is going to require that you become a man, that you become weak, and that they have their wicked way upon you. Sure. You know, I can see if, it, if that was me volunteering, the father would say, then don't be throwing a fit when they come to take you and do it. Right? You, 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 you say you understand this. Don't say you understand it, Jesus, in the classroom of glory where we have not even created the earth yet. Because this doesn't apply right now in happy heaven with angels fanning you, and you, you understand, you know, I'm... Do you understand this when it gets bad? Yeah, I won't be robbed of my power. I, die, I empty myself. I could call 10,000 angels. I'm not going to do that. That's not, that's not your way. That's not the way. That's not the plan. He is, <clears throat> he is God and as such empowered, armed, and nuked to the max. The glory of the moment is, and I say it like that. I mean, okay, here's Jesus. He still is God, and as God, at any moment he chooses, he could call 10,000 angels, or he could just, do you understand what I'm saying? He's... It's like the arsenal is there. He just chooses not to use it. So, so let me read that statement again. He is God and as such empowered, armed, and nuked to the max. But the glory of the moment is that he chooses not to use it. Now, now it's one thing to be down and out and people slapping you and beating you, you know, and hanging you on a cross, and you are weak and unable to do anything about it. It's another thing for them to do that, and you could really do something about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? And God will, you know, let me tell you, you know, people talk about the scriptures that says, well, you know, when this is over and we get to the millennium, well, we're going to be priests and kings, and we're going to rule nations. Folks, oh, my God, the testing, the training is going on now, and if you're using the slightest power to get back or to have your way or to fight back. He can't entrust you with greater things and people. He can't do it. But if you, like Christ, having this mind in you, can let them do that and have at your disposal things that could take them out, that could take them down, and you don't use them, you know, I... I I was thinking about a statement this morning. We say we've made Jesus Lord, so we've let him master us. We've let him master our reactions. We've let him master our, our abilities. We've let him master the things that he puts within our hands, and he masters us. We don't take those things and use them to get back or for our glory or to, you know, I mean, these are, these are, you know, let this mind be in you is a bigger deal than just, oh, yes, let's be polite. No. 
He is, he is God putting off a sovereign vesture for be, uh, beggar's rags. He is God rising from his throne where he sits as judge and going to the gallows for the criminal. He is God impoverishing himself, beggaring himself, exposing himself to evil. We don't comprehend that. I mean, I grew up in Oak Cliff, folks. You, Oak Cliff is evil. You're always exposed to evil. You can't get around it. There are ghetto, you know, I don't know if anybody saw the news and they were talking about the national news and all the young kids that are dying in schools in Chicago. And they're just killing them left and right, you know, and stuff. And they were talk, walking with one kid and he said, I'm scared to go to school. And I'm scared that, you know, on and on and on and on. Um, when there's evil all around you, and God's blessed many of us where there's not, but I mean, when there's evil all around you, at any moment, anything can go crazy, out of control, just unexplainable how it can go. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it's one reason why I came to Jesus, because when I was a drug dealer, yes, selling drugs, there was paranoia and there were there was always people that was trying to rip off your drugs and there was people that would make a deal but they didn't really want the deal they wanted your drugs or your money and then they would be willing to kill you and on and on and on and on and on and and after a while it's like you don't know who you can trust and you're just shaking all over all the time and you're you know it's just a madhouse and and people on drugs are crazier than off you know and so it's like, man, I just, you know, I would just like a little peace. Just give me a little peace. And when I met Jesus, it's like, thank God to be out of that world. And then I realized, well, in this world, I'm the main one who needs mastering. I need the Lord to master my use of things. My hands, my feet, my motives. And, you know, and I've said this recently, but you know what? There are people that are using power to get back at you. They're using this, this influence or that influence or talking or gossip or whatever they're using. Folks, those same people, if you brought many of those same people to high-ranking positions, even as, as governors or as, as uh, tyrants over nations, they would use that stuff to the extreme that they have the power. Do you understand what I'm saying? They would use whatever means they could to get their way and to make themselves look good. They would. God, you know, God sees it in seed form already in them. He doesn't have to, you know, that's the problem, see. We think, well, it has to, you know, maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they would be wonderful people. Well, there's the seed, and if that's the seed, I know what it produces. But if it's the seed of Christ, there's hope for all mankind. There's hope for you. There's hope for me. And then that gives me hope for the worst of people. Because it's going to be Christ, not I, not you. So... I can wait. I can wait through the storm. I can wait until the glory of God begins to come. And it doesn't always. Some people never turn. But as I was talking in the last class, maybe it was this one, I don't know, about someone recently, their heart is different. Their heart is very, very different than it was. It was violent and hateful. And now it's forgiving and, and, and looking at itself and saying, you know, I really, the problem was really here, you know. And folks, what I said back to them, well, as far as me, the problem was here, <laughs> you know. If, the, if you're going to get low, I'm going to do my best to get lower because I feel that that's Christ because you want to pull, you're not going to pull them up to a higher place by getting up above them and looking down on them saying, come be with me where I'm at. You're going to get them up there by getting down in the dirt and getting up under them and pushing with all your might. So it's two different worlds, two different spirits, two different ways. One is the way of the Lord. The other one is the way of all flesh.
He is God impoverishing himself, beggaring himself, exposing himself to evil, to spite, to spit, never sparing himself until he has made the cross on Jerusalem's hill the sign and the sum of his utter self-giving. And that's what the cross is. It is the sign of complete self-giving to what to the lowest extent to reach those who gladly lift themselves above you. Gladly. Because it's their nature. How are you going to reach them? By getting stronger than them and slapping them around? <laughs> you know? No. You reach, hopefully you reach them by showing them a life and a reaction and a motive that is not out to get them, that still loves them, that will go to incredible lengths to reach them. That's not me. That's not you. That's Christ. That's Jesus, pure Jesus, only Jesus. And all attempts to copy that will only make you angry. It must be Jesus. This copying stuff doesn't work. It only makes monsters. It is the law, for it is an external thing put upon them, either by themselves or whatever, that tries to bring about what is not nature or natural to them. That's the law. That's what the law is, external to you. But God put Christ in us and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus now is our motive, is our means, our motive and our means. <clears throat> Jesus walked among the strong armies and emissaries of Rome, but displayed no pride that underneath he was a king. Now, I know that might, be, that might be hard for you, but picture you being the king of glory, and you're walking around in, if you will, carpenter clothes, and these Roman soldiers are walking by in the emissaries, and, oh, you know, we are the, you know, emissaries of Caesar in Rome, you know? And Jesus isn't going, you ain't nothing. Or, well, don't they know who I am? Anybody following this? This is the mind, and it's not a special lamb mind. Well, I didn't say land mind. I said lamb <laughs> mind. It is a land mind to some people. The lamb mind is a land mind. Mind. But Christ is the life of the body and the hope of every member. But only if... He lives only if his mind be in us, not his scriptures, not his theological principles. The body of Christ must truly be the vehicle of the life of Christ. All right, let me try to finish this up here. Almost done. He regularly ministered around the proud religious leaders of Jerusalem, yet never tried to outdo them. I always thought at 12 years old, he's asking them questions. Probably at 12, he knew more than, you know. <laughs> There's something in us that says, well, I've got an out. I, got a, I have to outdo that person. Because they look better? Is the outward appearance really that important? Or, or God's looking on the heart. God's seeing what others do not see. When you pray, go into your closet. Don't be as the Pharisees who do it outwardly. And, you know, and it says, for they do it to be seen of men. Seen of men. It's the outward glory. Well, this is the, this is the beauty of self-emptying. He divests himself of all outward glory. And as we'll see as we get into this class, only the very astute, if you will, not, not mentally astute, not intellectually astute, only the very 
um, uh, discerning. Only the very discerning will see past the carpenter clothes, however you want to put it. We'll see past all of that. Everyone else won't get it. They'll walk past the barn and miss the manger. They'll go to the king's houses to find what they're looking for. They will look for his glory in outward demonstrations and will not find it in a barn. They wouldn't be caught dead in a barn. <clears throat> he had all power but never used it on his own behalf or to look superior. He was completely good in his being, but never made the outcast, the leper or prostitute, feel in inferior. Now that's amazing. That's a special quality, folks. Like they would all stand around and go, oh, you're it, you're, you know, da 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 da. You know, apparently they felt comfortable. Folks, most people don't feel comfortable around people that are super religious, especially prostitutes and outcasts and, you know, th th there's just no way. But they threw, you know, Matthew, Levi threw a big party and invited Jesus. My God, where would they even get the idea they could throw a big uh, uh Republican party, tax collector party, a big Republican party, and that Jesus would come. But you know, it's the, scripturally, it's the only party he went to, the Republican party. I mean, the, the Republican party, the tax collectors. <laughs> and apparently, they felt like if we invite him, he might come. I don't know. I don't know. Instead, he carried himself as lowly. And I think there's something to be said for letting this mind be in you because the results will not be you. They will be him. And they will bring glory to the Father because they will demonstrate. Here we have, I'll, I'll end with this. I'm sorry I'm talking so long, but I, this is it. See, my Bible's zipped up and closed. <clears throat> I, was, I, I grieve often. I look at the world, I look at even Christianity, and I see a lot of attitudes and stuff that just aren't Christ. They're so selfish and so mean to one another. And, and it grieves me to my bone, and therefore it grieves me even more because I look at myself and I think, oh, I want to give you so much more of Christ than what I give you. And, and I was just agonizing. And, and the Lord showed me a picture of an old um, uh, uh, guy that uh, would pan for gold. And uh, he'd be up there in the streams coming down, and he'd be sitting there with his pan looking, and he'd go through so much gravel, you know. And all of a sudden, if he found one little piece of gold, he'd just go, yeah, look at this. Just, you know, gold represents deity. That's Christ. That's not us. But it's supposed to be Christ in us. You know, we're tried with fire. We shall come forth with gold. That's what he said. What that means is when we go through trials, Jesus comes out of us. And he gets that one little piece. I don't know. How much is gold an ounce now? Anybody know? 200, 400, what? 1500 I didn't realize it was that high, but I know it is right now really big, so much so that I was at the dentist about a month ago, and they pulled out one of my uh, crowns and set it over there, and they, they were going to put in a new crown, which is they're usually made of gold and stuff like that, and I asked, can I have the old one since I paid for it? And someone told me that little bit of gold in there is probably worth $200. He said that will probably pay for the dental work that you've actually got more from that than this. <laughs> that, that miner said, look at this, gold. And the, and the Lord was showing me that to say, let me tell you, it may be dark and he may be panning a lot, but when he finds that little bit of gold, it shall be 
uh, what does it say, something toward rejoicing on his part and our part at the discovery of Christ. Father, we ask you to help us not be religious and not to receive your word religiously, to not get caught up in this stuff, Lord, but to hear your heart, to hear your sweet spirit who really lifts up Jesus and, and to know, Father, to know Jesus, to know, Holy Spirit, that you only want to bring us into all fullness by union, and that's why you became man, and that's why you emptied yourself, and that's why you, you became obedient unto death so that you'd have a bride, so that you'd have that which is one with you. We are sorry in the sense that we bring forth so little gold, and yet we rejoice with you because there seems so little in the world that you at least get something. Be pleased, be pleased by your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. We're dismissed.